your boy just had BK. So I'm in a place of Zen right now. I'm in a very calm state. So I thought today I would go back to an original video that I called my favorite card control. Now here's the thing. I've taught this before on the channel. I've taught this before. I've mentioned this control over and over again. And it turns out the magicians are never satisfied. Hey, pig cake, show me your DPS. Hey, pig cake, show me your pass. It doesn't matter. None of it matters because we all die at the end. So today, what I thought I'd do, I'd go back, I'd show you guys my second favorite card control. I'd go over the nuances, why I like it, and more specifically, why I think you should adapt this, uh, these nuts as your favorite control as well. So let's do this one, a big camera. All right. No longer are we in a DJI Osmo pocket. Like we're in some sort of communistic uh, state, even though this is what I've been filming with for the past, uh, I would say eight months. The reason for this, just look at this, look at this thing. It's like a, it's like a less retarded Wally. -E. This thing's ridiculous. See with this camera, it's not like you're overcompensating. All right. Uh, with this, you're overcompensating because what is it? You can't afford a Rolex. You can't get a Rolex GMT Pepsi bezel. So you got to go to a longislandwatch.com and buy a GMT uh, bezel. So you could put it on your Seiko diver that you got an offer up for way too little money and uh, you make it look like a Rolex, all right? That's what I'm doing. You put it on a Jubilee bracelet, you try to make it look like a Rolex because you can't afford a Rolex. That's overcompensating. This camera's not overcompensating. This camera's undercompensating, but over delivering. That's what we should expect from technology. And that's what you guys should expect from me. What other channels are as dynamic as this one in terms of blocking? Look at how I changed the angle to best show you guys this uh, wonderful move known as the uh, the Mahatma control. According to uh, Dennis Bayer's tremendous conjuring archive, uh, this was first done as a substitute for the past an encyclopedia of card tricks. Now that could be different. Uh, obviously there are different sources. First time I see it here known as the uh, Mahatma shuffle would be uh, in 1962 in close up card magic. But it's still a very, very effective move and one that um, I think should be in the arsenal of any close up card magician. So here's the actual move itself. Uh, we're gonna be using these uh, Bin Wang playing cards because Bin Wang, obviously the rupping. So here's the control itself. It's a very, very simple move. Here's the uh, five of diamonds, making sure that it's in focus. All we gotta do is this. You're ready, look, the card's lost in the deck. Give it a little bit of a shuffle. That's it. Look at the precision here. Look at the ease of use. Look at the difficulty here. All I'm doing is shuffling the deck, but that, guess what? That card is under my complete control. Not only that, but also I could peek at the card. A little bit of a bonus. I could peek at the card and it looks like a natural shuffle. It looks like something anybody would do, but guess what? The card is controlled right to the top of the deck. Oh boy. Why do you have to make it more difficult? Why do we have to bother with DPSs and DPs and uh, fathers leaving us when we could just do a control like this and uh, pretty much simplify our entire lives. Now this is just one move, but where else can we learn multiple moves? As a matter of fact, two videos every single week going over card and coin moves from a beginner all the way to expert level tuition for $5 a month. Where else can we do that? Where could we learn all these moves? Oh, the Pig Cake Magic Academy. That's right, $5 a month gets you two videos every single week, over 300 videos already, over 300 videos assuming you do sign up for the Mentalism Academy, which is $10 a month, but it's still cheap, all right? It's still reasonable. All the videos are accessible, beginner to expert level stuff, theory, history, everything's there. Check it out. Uh, so here is the actual control itself. We're gonna get, for example, this card right here with the uh, message, the obviously erupting message, and we're gonna get a break right above it. So we're gonna make sure that our pinky is there, right there, to make sure that we have a little bit of a separation, much like the separation between me and my loved ones. So that is uh, the first step here. If you guys want a little bit of a tutorial on how to improve your pinky break, I have a video that you should click on. So uh, that's the first step. The next step, we're gonna come in with our right hand and we're simply gonna pick up all the cards above the break. So after closing the spread, we're just gonna pick up all the cards above the break and here's the move, you ready? That's it, that's all we're gonna do. So we're gonna put our forefinger underneath the uh, left-handed packet here and tilt it to the right. At the same time, we're gonna turn these cards face up. You see what this does? I don't have to explain it. You see what this does? This puts you in a perfect position to be able to overhand shuffle these cards and subsequently control that card to the top of the deck with a very, very simple action. So one more time, let's say we have uh, the Lerupping card. We're gonna squirt up, 
we're just gonna lift up all the cards above the brake. We're gonna tilt both of these packets to the right and we're gonna shuffle. It's not hard to do, it's not hard to do. So all we're doing one more time, we're just tilting this packet here and shuffling those cards to the bottom. Now, how do we retain control over that top card and have continuous shuffles? As a matter of fact, how are we able to shuffle and then weave the cards together much like your grandmother would if she's given a deck of cards and uh, could actually hold it without dying. Simple, we're using a milk build shuffle, which means we're putting pressure with our fingers here. So these fingers are putting pressure, the thumbs putting pressure, and we're just lifting. And you notice what happens when we put that pressure, the top and bottom card come out at the same time, which allows us to shuffle and continue the shuffle while controlling the top card here. So let me leave that card face up for the sake of explanation. I'm just pressing with my fingers. You see that? The little dirty action? I could shuffle all day. I could just sit there in front of the spectator and shuffle the cards all day until they call the cops uh, because I'm naked and I have peanut butter smeared all over my frenulum. Doesn't matter because that card is gonna stay on top. From this angle, it just looks like this. Nothing is suspicious to the spectator. Now, how do we get a peek at that card at the same time? All we gotta do is just push our fingers, that's it. So as we're shuffling, all we gotta do is just push our fingers slightly and we could peek at that card. You see how much is jutting out? Ray Charles could see that card and he's black. So let's see the control in action with the peek right over here in one simple step. You see this? So the card is now controlled, peaked, and not only that, it's still on top of the deck in a very, very fair action. So you see one move allows you to peek at the card, allows you to control the card, and allows you to convey to the audience that the deck is shuffled well beyond your control because it looks like shit. So we're taking advantage of uh, this haphazard shuffle and the fact that uh, the cards pretty much look like uh, you don't care about the order. So imagine the difference between uh, that and maybe one of these controls, which I've seen before. Okay, so your card's uh, there, middle of the deck. Perfect, okay, so we'll just uh, lose your card somewhere in the middle of the deck, sir. Your card's uh, currently lost somewhere in there. And I just wanna make sure that the uh, cards reflect that. Uh, of course not, the card's still on top of the deck, you stupid idiot. Any spectator could realize this. Spectators are stupid, but not that stupid. So what are the benefits of this control? Well, this is what we refer to in the magic business as an overt control, meaning the spectators could see an action taking place. So the action here is what? Is a shuffle. That's an overt control. So whatever trick requires a deck to be shuffled or whatever trick involves a deck needing to be shuffled and uh, can make use of this control is gonna work perfectly. However, if you need a trick where uh, the spectator doesn't see any actions, then that's a covert control. And of which case you would just do your favorite little pass there and uh, control the card to the top without the uh, spectator seeing anything. That's a covert control. So this is an overt action, which implies what? Implies what, you virgins? Implies a level of control on your end. So subconsciously to the spectator, you are conveying to them that you have an element of control over the deck. That's what this overt control does. So keep that in mind when you choose and you pick which card tricks it goes in. If you need to have the card go in the middle and the spectator thinks that, that card stays in the middle and it's not anywhere in your control, do a pass, do a covert control. If it doesn't matter and the uh, spectator could see you shuffling the deck and it doesn't matter if uh, that's part of the trick, then do an over control and use this one because it's easy. It's not hard, anybody could do it. So that is the uh, Mahatma control. Again, it's my second favorite control. My first control is in a video that I posted not so long ago. And uh, this one would be my second one just because of the economy of motion. You could peek at the card, you could control it, and there isn't much to it. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Oh man, that BK is really coming up. Like the video, like the video, you know what that does. That tricks YouTube into thinking that my channel is actually better than it is. And uh, I've realized that uh, there's a direct correlation between how YouTube promotes my videos and how many likes are on the video, unfortunately. So you have to fish for likes. You have to say, hey guys, don't forget to like the video. Honestly, it makes me wanna hang myself every time I say it, but I have to. So thank you guys. Uh, I'm gonna go. Honestly, uh, I'm gonna go just stand around and uh, really not do anything.